As the summer has worn on, we've already seen the signs of permanent change. But here in Virginia, it's a bit more difficult than in many states because of the pivotal role the Commonwealth played in the Civil War. Rachel Lucas now takes us to Lexington, where the city's own history is being rewritten with a different emphasis as people there grapple with traditions as old as the city itself. Fighting to preserve history while creating equality. Perhaps no other city in Virginia embodies the Commonwealth's current identity struggle like Lexington, a progressive community with deep Confederate roots. You far too often see the holding of these flags in situations of white supremacy. Buried here, Stonewall Jackson and Robert E. Lee are the namesakes throughout the city. We are here to honor Lee and Jackson. For decades, the city hosted a parade on Lee Jackson Day with Confederate flags in hand. Those who wave them say, however, it's not about slavery or racism. Fighting this ongoing battle uh, with a political movement uh, of sorts that uh, is seeking to, to destroy everything uh, related to it out of complete ignorance and mischaracterization. of Those marching in Lexington's MLK parade the same weekend would disagree. What are we marching for? Justice! Mayor Frank Friedman says interpretation of Confederate symbolism is far from black and white. It's, it's a little more complicated than that. He says to understand why is to understand history. Our community is not built around Lee and Jackson. It's built uh, around um, two universities. Universities that owe much of their notoriety to the two generals. VMI, where Stonewall Jackson taught before the Civil War, and Washington and Lee, a college saved by Robert E. Lee after his surrender. They didn't put his name on it because we wanted to promote slavery. Lucas Morrell has taught at Washington and Lee for 21 years. I think he was a traitor. I don't have a portrait of him on my wall in my house. That won't happen. But I do value, I appreciate the contribution he made to our university because he did it in a very public way and in a way that he self-consciously thought he was setting an example for others. He said, we have to accept that we lost and this is how we're going to do it. I'm going to do it by shaping the souls of tomorrow's leaders. While Morrell is open to renaming public streets and spaces, he says the university's name should remain. And even though he's not a hero of mine, I think he should be someone we value for that contribution. Stonewall Jackson Cemetery, which was a whites only cemetery as late as the 1970s, is the latest to be renamed. But Mayor Friedman says it's going to take more than that. I'm not so sure that uh, eliminating those artifacts or those uh, elements uh, of Lee and Jackson's names is as critical as telling the story of the black community and their contributions. Eric Wilson, a noted local historian, is leading that charge. I certainly think that having a diversity of stories to tell um, is important. Lexington is now putting more of an emphasis on its black history through events like this walking tour through the Diamond Hill neighborhood. We're here at one of the stops at the Lilburn Downing School. It was the first school African Americans could earn a high school degree in Lexington. There's no doubt there's also a current appetite for people uh, who want to hear a wider range of stories. Wilson says as the debate continues and Lexington evolves, it's also making history. History is important to every community, uh, the ways in which uh, it evolves over time, the facts of things that happen, the people it happens to and happens with. And now we are witness to Lexington's history in the making as it works to reclaim an identity representative of its entire community. The city of Richmond is another community grappling with what to do next. It's home to more than a dozen Confederate monuments, some of which were recently removed.